Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a rook. Here we are. So, may I suggest if you haven't done a lot of drawing of birds before you go straight to, I've got watercolour paper here, before you go straight to your watercolour paper and um, drawing your bird, may I suggest that you um, basically have a little practice. Yeah? So, I'm just going straight into it. So, I've just found a photograph on Google. So, just keenly observe the shapes, the shape of the entire bird, but also, obviously, the shape within. So, the overall shape and the shape of the bird, obviously. I've been drawing for a long time. I used to draw a lot as a child. And I studied art to degree level. And I've been selling my paintings since I was about 12. There we are. So I used to do a lot of um, observing. Um, and then I developed my own style. It, it can take time. So, perseverance and practice is key if you want to get good at drawing, basically. So, what I'm doing next is I'm putting the water on. I don't always do this, but this is fun um, with the birds, I found. Um, I like doing it because the inks that I use, I use Dale Rowney or I use Liquitex generally. Um, these and they've got a little pipette and when you're doing bigger scale things you can actually draw with a pipette. I've done canvas before drawing with a pipette, uh, massive roses and things like this. Um, there we are, see what happens. It's amazing. I'm gonna have to dab it in a minute because it's kind of gone a bit haywire but that's what I like about these inks. I've been using them for probably about 20 years now and I don't tire of them. Um, I really enjoy because you kind of never really know what you're going to get. There you go, I didn't actually mean to do that. <laughs> I'm actually going to put a different colour on there. I'm going to put some um, green on there. What I am going to do is I'm just going to dab this here. That's gone a bit haywire, but you know, it's part of the look of this kind of thing, um, the thing. It's quite, it can be quite random. You don't really know what you're going to get. Um, and for me, that's the beauty of it. That's why I like it. I'm just going to do that. I don't know that I really want that dark bit there particularly. So, it's not the end of the world. It wasn't the plan, but like I say, this is what happens with these inks, is that it doesn't necessarily go to plan. So just recognise that with me doing this here. I've been doing this for 20 years. It didn't quite go to plan, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, and here we are, I've got rock salt, and I use rock salt because you get good texture uh, with the rock salt because they're sli slightly bigger. There we are. Uh, table salt is obviously smaller and finer, and you don't, you won't get such a noticeable texture. Um, and that's where I use this. Now when it's dry, um, all of it is dry, this all needs to dry, it takes a little bit longer obviously because it's quite wet. Um, that's when you can then uh, gently brush it off. So don't do it before, because that'll be a shame, because um, it will all smudge. So I'm going you know, to use my fine liner. Um, so I use um, Uniball uh, fine liners. Um, they're great. I really like them. And so I'm going to do. I need to do this. 
and sort of I go over the pencil lines it's not the end of the world if you've got pencil lines showing it doesn't really matter but I'm not that bothered um, I don't generally use pencil for things like when I draw my flowers and my butterflies and things I just go straight to it with either a pen or the inks but with the birds I tend to draw the outline first with pencil but each their own so you can start off just uh, painting straight off uh, use the use a pencil up to you personal preference there we are now when you've put the salt on it's not a good idea uh, to then paint over it because you're going to get a very salty brush so just be aware of that so i'm going to work on this bit now now the beaks are not very easy you might want to find an easier picture to follow because this one I don't find incredibly easy because it's quite a difficult angle. There we are. Now I use white ink and sometimes I go over it uh, with white ink as well so I use white ink. So I'm going to use some white ink to help with the eye there. So what I do here rather like this texture of the pen on top of the um, ink and what I'm going to do dab it just with some tissue paper and just get a bit more structure here with the wing yeah with the wing here just so you can actually see because if it's too black I can't really see anything and you need to have a bit of contrast so I'm going to use a bit of white afterwards you need a bit of contrast to be able to see um, some of the shapes and lines because if it's all too dark then you need I think that you need a little bit more it's quite nice to have a little bit more what I, what I would call information um, because all of this is information at the end of the day for the eye to see and it's about breaking it up in that sense so I'm going to Use my white ink, but I've got a little bit of black on here, so it's going to be slightly grey. It's not pure white. I don't want pure white beak because that's not how it looks. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to uh, do this, and I use my fingernail. Fingernail. I use my finger um, to dab it, not my fingernail like this there we are a little bit of texture a little bit of like I say information um, and something that denotes feathers and the separate feathers if you like rather than just all black there we are and probably what I would do is um, do little bits highlighted here. I'm doing this fairly quickly. You can see what I'm doing. There we are. Probably going to add a little bit more ink under here so it's nice and dark. Um, and then I'll probably add so it's a little bit whiter. So we've got that good contrast, the light contrast. I like the contrast with these. Yeah, I think I'm going to now um, use my fine liner for the beak and to finish that one off. Yeah. Fabulous birds, these. A lot of jackdaws where we are and crows. This one is a rook. Gosh, why isn't it all green? Green legs. There we are. So I'm going to dab. I do sometimes I take a bit of paint from the painting. There we are. Righty, so. Do a little bit more. Yeah. I tend to use my, my pen on top of the paint straight away, but sometimes it 
it needs to dry a little bit. So up to you if you want to let it dry a little bit, but I kind of tease it out a bit. So what I'm going to do now is do the flicking and show you that you want it to be quite random. So it's about um, using it like this and doing it sort of all over and round so that it's not all in the same place because what you really don't want to do is do it for example diagonally or all the same way because otherwise you get lines of dots uh, similarly if you go that way it just doesn't work so it has to be a bit random and I tend to dip my paintbrush in the ink put it in water um, so it's slightly diluted like that and then I'm gonna do some white and probably will fill a little bit more up with this just a tiny bit but that's essentially the look. There we are. 